up, my guys? We are back. This is the Juice Box. I would like to give a couple special shout outs. One, Tiggy Nation, you know, I just wanted to give you a shout out. Haven't talked to you in a while. I hope you're doing well. Life's been busy. We all know that. Love you. We wish you were here. Also, special shout out. Happy birthday to one of our very own, Brooke Stalls, soon to be Brooke Price. I almost said Brooke Zarley. <laughs> but, uh, Zarley, what's up, my guy? Brooke Price. Brooke Price. That sounds good. It does. That's I kind of like Brooke Zarley better. Yeah, I'm kind of a big fan of Brooke Zarley. <laughs> Brooke Zarley. <laughs> Honestly, we talked about it last week. Zarley, I think, was originally a last name. Oh, we were talking about yeah. that. Yeah. Fun I mean, fact. Dude, have, have you ever thought about going to Zarley's stall? No. Whoa. No? I had an English no. teacher in college. I don't know if you had him. His last name was like Kermer or something. He was a weird, really weird guy. He kind of reminded you of Uncle AJ in a way. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had the worst <laughs> English <What a> shot. <laughs> I had the worst English two teacher ever. I hate that woman. I still hate her. Oh, what was I'll her find name? Her one day. I have no I, I idea. Say like I can remember all my teachers like from grade school up through high school. <laughs> Can't barely remember what? any college. Professors. I feel that though too. She, uh, I had a C minus at like the progress, like the halfway through point. And she was like just telling everyone she's gonna fail. Whoa! And then um, what it, what's it called? Whenever you rate the teachers at the end of the year, Re- what uh, like the review thing? Yeah, yeah. What it, there's is a uh, thing yeah, for it. It's um, called evaluation. Email that's what yeah, yeah, student bang, evaluation. Bang. She was like her last words. One of her her parting words to us was, "I now it's the evaluation time, so I'm gonna hand these out and I have to leave the room." But to tell you the truth, I'm leaving after the semester, so it doesn't matter what you put down. <laughs> Did you guys just let it fly? I just didn't put anything. I just left. Yeah, that's yeah, what I would have done. I fuck, fuck I would have ripped into her. Yeah. Fucking ripped. In. I've I've ripped into one professor. I took a fucking mid-semester gym class, <laughs> fitness walking, and she failed me. I got an F in fitness walking because she said I didn't turn in. <laughs> Uh, three of the things which I did turn in, she lost them, dude. I tried to take my case like all the way up to like the head of the oh my of the God. physical education Were department. You? Guess who the head of the physical physical education department was? Hugs? No, my fucking <laughs> professor. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I was oh, so I was sick. Fucked. I was so sick about it. Like, dude, I, and like she just wouldn't even respond to my emails. Like. I fucking turned this shit in. It's fitness walking. Did like, you go so knocking easy. down Gordon Gee's doors, demanding yeah, it, a retrial? That was pre Gordon Gee, I believe. Actually, Damn. who who was the president when we first started there? I truly don't remember because I think Gordon Gee started like my sophomore year, maybe. Yeah. So, anyways, I, I ended up having to retake fitness walking, which was like a blessing in disguise because I took it with Sith and Jacko, and we had a good old time. Yeah, it was fun. Was was that the class where? You had to run. Yeah, we had to run the mile. Yeah, dude. Because I remember he came, he he came back. Like him and Seth came back one day, and they were like, "Dude, this is fitness walking, and we show up and we have to fucking run a mile." Yeah, we were, were pissed. pissed about it. It's like this is a fucking walking class, but we have to run the mile. Yeah, that would. What'd you run? You remember? I ran it in. Yeah, it was like seven something minutes. That's pretty good. Pretty yeah. good mile. Better than I would have done. Running miles is hard. I don't get it. To be honest, running is yeah. tough. It, it like no no shit at all. Like. I think running the, is hard I as think fuck. The last mile I ran, if I can remember, you were probably in eighth grade. Yeah, and it was <laughs> like I I finished in like like fourteen minutes, and I it got to a point where I was like, this is so dumb. Dude, I just don't even feel like doing this. We 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 had to do it at Central for Dubai. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, I think sure. so. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was maybe like, it was. maybe it was like a half mile, dude. But I remember we did it at in college for that class. It was at the. Uh, that building right next to the Coliseum. I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a, it's for like the athletics. Yeah, I know. It's got, I, it's got the, the track outside of it. Yeah, I'm blanking on the name of it. But too. anyways, on the inside, there's an indoor track on it too. And it was actually pretty cool. Our class was always going on during like the track and field teams practices. So like there'd be athletes around the one like, you know, like actual fucking stuff. And we're just kind of like, power walking around dude i told the day we had to run the mile i guarantee there was a day though i will almost guarantee that there 100 percent was a day where somebody was off their game and sith was like 
I bet I could beat them in a fucking sprint. <laughs> yeah. right, I, I bet I, bet oh, I could beat them in the 10 by 10. Yeah, he probably said that every day knowing yeah. him. There, was, we, there would always be the people in the corner doing the, uh, like, practicing the, um, what is that, pole vaulting where you run? Oh, shout out, Dan, stick that in the shout out Dan Scott. That's just, that shit looks fun, honestly. That kid, yeah, I'd like to try that. That kid, Dan, you remember Dan Scott from Central? I do not. Okay, well, anyway, Was he in your class? He was a year older than me. Anyway, Dan that Scott. kid could fucking pole vault. Do you remember Jake at this track? I, I do remember Dan Scott, actually. Like he, he, he was, was pretty good. He, he was a good athlete. I, I, don't, I, never, I, I don't know what happened to Dude, him. Shout out Aaron so, Baines. Some say he's out still you know, on him. the track, just pole vaulting every day of his life. Some say that. They some see say. The, the ghost of Dan Scott. Some say they wake up in the morning and they hear a rooster go off and they look to the horizon and they see Dan fly over a tree. I'd like to see a picture. I'd probably recognize him if I saw a picture. I'm not going to lie, guys. I'll be right back. I'm literally going to shit my pants. That's oh. Fire, bro. That's so fire. Mid episode shit. I don't think that's ever happened. No. I've never had to shit during an I mean, I've probably had the shit towards the end of an episode. Yeah, but you you know, you just hold it in. Yeah, I just hold it in like a man. Interesting. Like a man. First time for everything, right? Yeah, I guess so. So were were you a track guy, Bubba? Track guy? No. Yeah. Were were you just hot did you play lax? Were you lax, bro, too? Just hockey and uh football. Okay. In high Foosball. school. A little, little baseball before that. Yeah, dude. I, 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 f- I did really enjoy baseball growing up, but for some reason, like, I just remember sixth grade, I just stopped playing. I feel like I, baseball was probably the th- best thing That I is, at. like, the track for most baseball players. when you're Because yeah. everyone plays, and, like, I quit in eighth grade, I think. I used to have yeah. so much fun playing baseball. Sixth grade would have been Bronco leagues. Yeah. yeah. A lot of kids didn't play past Bronco. Yes. Yeah, like Pony was when it got K- Pony is the very, color. very serious. Yeah, so I I I play I didn't play my first year of Bronco and then like the season was just about to start. And I think it was I think it was Mr. Stevens talk because I was always on their teams growing up. Mr. Stevens talked me into playing and I, I remember like it was fun, but the the jump from I'm I do remember the jump from Pinto to Bronco being like a severe jump. Oh, that's a yeah. big well, you're you skipped over Mustang. Yeah. Oh wait, I'm but sorry, yeah. Mustang Mu- to Bronco. Yeah, like, I mean it it did always get it always seemed like when because you'd play two years of each league or whatever, and it always seemed like the first year in that next league up was like, oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> and and I was already like behind because yeah, i didn't do right it. you I, didn't play i just remember getting out there for the first couple games being like damn this shit's different bro yeah i, I was a huge baseballer I, i'm a little mad i didn't play like in high school and further on so what what team yeah. were you on were you a lion i were was you an elm grove eagle you were an eagle, All, an eagle. Like, nine the, years the green, the green team green right team, yeah, yeah. What, what? i was an elm grove eagle oh were you? really yeah I, so yeah. I played two years in elm grove before i moved up on the hill okay so i was an elm grove nice. eagle and an elm grove civic and then I moved up to Mount Olivet, and we were basically the Cardinals. So year. what was it? Lions, Civics, Eagles, but there was so, there was there a, f- was a part for the Pirates, a yeah. couple years depending on. Yeah, yeah, but that was that was random because that was more for East Wheeling was always the Pirates. Yeah, they were in the same color too. Obviously, they yeah. both were yellow. I'm Dude. trying to think there. Who was the? Who'd you say there was the Eagles, which was green? The Civics were red. The Lions were blue. blue. That's I don't right. remember the line. I have zero recollection of the stunk. Lions. <laughs> the Elm Grove the Lions. The Civics always stacked their team. The Civics the Civ- were Much always, like they Pike. were red, right? Pike, fuck yeah. Pike. Pike. Civics Gold were red, right? Gray, I was going to say, are, are you guys yeah. Pike yeah, boys? Yeah, let's, hey. let's relax. Hey, let's, let's pull, 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 pull no, but it, it honestly, it's it's so crazy how at such a young age, politics already begin. A hundred percent. Because Pike, I remember there was always the stacked teams, yeah. which I got on sometimes. But most of the time, I wasn't on the stacked teams. You you guys want to hear Little League Baseball <laughs> politics? Let's do this. You want to hear some... I'm so hyped for talking this, about this. This shit got in, like fucking intense in Mount Olivet for a couple years. So like my team in Mount Olivet competed for the cha- like the league-wide championship a couple times in a row. Like We had a <laughs> stacked fucking team. And then one year... We got even more stacked because Mozart couldn't field a team, and Joel Jarrett had to come play for Mount Olive. And he's a was a fantastic baseball player, like a hell of a pitcher. He's a very yeah. fast kid too. But yeah, I mean, just a very he's good so all around athlete. He's so fast. He makes fast people look not fast. Well, anyways, there was like a big stink about. So, like, you guys know where my parents' house is up there. Yeah. Apparently, like the county, or it's not even the county line. It's the. Or no, it is the county line. The county line runs like halfway through my neighborhood. Okay. So 
so one year Mozart was trying to get a team back together and there was this huge stink and it was it was actually I'm pretty sure it was Paul Henry's dad it was Mr. Henry um was fighting he was saying that all of us that lived on Heritage Drive were technically on the Mozart boundary line and we had to like by law play for Mozart and like my dad had been the Mount Olivet baseball commissioner for like years really? up to this point since we start since we moved up there and like it, it turned into like obviously I wasn't it was like the Hatfields and McCoy was. I wasn't like <laughs> I wasn't like directly involved in it because I was a little kid but like I know some shit went on you know behind the scenes and stuff and it, it turned into a big ordeal long story short we ended up still being able to play for Mount Olivet but now let's let's throw a hypothetical out here okay uh-huh. hypothetically you guys would have all been on that Mozart team. Could you have beat the Mount Olivet team? No. Nah. No? Mm-mm. We would have made that Mozart team a little bit better, but Mount Olivet still would have had the, like, four studs. I'm trying to remember. It was PJ, then that kid that always played at JM that was really good. P- we we had, like, on our championship team, kids that would have still remained on the Mount Olivet team, like, wouldn't have been forced to Mozart. It would have been, like, PJ, Logan Patrick, Cody Willis, Jeremy Hayes, like, all of our like stud players, Tank, yeah. John Tankovitz was a hell of a <laughs> fucking first baseman, dude. Dude, I I remember like all I knew when we had to play like Bethlehem and Mount Olivet every time we had to be on our A game because those games were always a fucking war, dude, to so, the end. Yeah. Every and luckily. No, no shade to you, JT, but I was always on the stack Pike teams, dog. Always on the stack yeah. Pike teams. We, no. I remember having <laughs> real good games against Pike. Yeah, I mean, I was on the stack team sometimes, but I'm then just, there were times where I was just our team was terrible. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just it's, it's you. so no. funny you say that though, because it's so true. Like back then, like even the, us as kids, like when we were a little bit older, be like, oh yeah, did you hear the rumors? Like we're getting those guys. Oh, you know, dude, the, like the it, county line, <laughs> little, little, you know, little league baseball, clue. dude. <laughs> yeah. And and even even past like once I hit high school, my brother was still playing ball. Right, turns this is hilarious. I I love telling this story. Fucking inner turmoil started happening within Mount Olive baseball. Damn. To bro. where <laughs> you they, guys were like they the had, Lakers. They had a team, right? My brother's team. And it was re- it was a real good team. Anyways, parents ended up like hating each other, blah, blah, blah. Next season. Sounds like little Patriots days. Ne- next season comes around <laughs> and those people are like, they hate my dad. They don't want my dad to be the commissioner anymore. And they don't want him to be their co- kid's coach anymore. So, like, my dad gets forced out as Mount Olivet commissioner. No way. He gets, for- like, voted out. And Was it fraud? And they split the team up. <laughs> was it election fraud, Bub- you think? Bubba would have it. was it. fraud. It was fraud. I'd be all over so that. Yeah. Fraud. They, <laughs> they split the team up. And my dad was like, that's fine. I'll take, I'll take my son and all, like, this group. You guys can have your stack team. Anyways. Late in the season, I love it. I already under know this under the lights at Mount Olive Ballpark, nighttime game, electric. The crowd's fucking pumped up. I the the two Mount Olive teams meet for the first and only time of the season, and my dad's team fucking beat them. That's, really, and they were I the underdog it so team. Dude, That's fire. That, it was an amazing atmosphere. I love these old it, Mount Olive. That might have been the only field with lights around here. One of them because b- before. I think that, uh, Oh, the, uh, yeah, four seventy. Four seventy. Because yeah. I remember that. I, I only remember playing there under the lights, and it was always electric. Dude, so much fun. That Dude, just like that just reminds me of uh, my eighth grade basketball team. Oh, we are the draft was like ridiculously unfair, mm-hmm. and we my team was literally a bunch of nerds and Gage Seaholzer. I don't know if you know who Gage Seaholzer <laughs> yeah, was, but anyway, just the nerd team, and we fucking ran. Everybody, they all would, year, we beat OLP with Luke Sassine. Like we beat everyone. They would, they would. We like, went to the championship and then lost to <laughs> Ross Boss Comus St. Joe's. Oh, yeah, they yeah. they would show up to games and it like I remember it yeah. being funny for me because it's I, I was in high school already, but you see the two other teams that are just mm. loaded, and then JT's team literally looks like the little giants. No, we're like play. the yeah little giants are like the bad news bears. But I'm not even exaggerating. Like we, we ran everyone like all season. I think we lost. Like we lost to St. Joe's during the regular season, and then like in the championship, and that was it. Yeah. Ha- Hazel's having a hairball she over here. <laughs> yeah, but that was electric. I'm I'm so pumped. We're talking about younger sports though, dude. Because I can even remember being. This was in Mustang. 
And like it was when I was always I was normally always on Pike Maroon and that we were really good and Bethlehem was really good and like John Michael was on their team, like a bunch of those guys that were nice. <coughs> and I remember we beat them for like it was the first time they lost as a group in years. And I just remember getting up and I think it was the fifth or sixth inning and just crushing a double and being so pumped because we went up with the two runs. And dude, like those memories, those memories will st- will stay with me for a long time, right, dude? Th- we Mount Olivet had some intense rivalries with Bethlehem. Those Bethlehem teams were stacked, stacked. Both of them usually were blue, stacked. blue and red were always stacked. It, it those are some of the best memories of my life. For dude. real, C- competitive like little league baseball. When we got into pony ball too, there was we developed a huge rivalry with Fulton. And Fulton had never had a good team. But what ended up happening that year, pony ball year, my last year playing Little League Baseball, uh, East Wheeling folded. Yep. So, like, all the East Wheeling kids went and played for Fulton. And, like, they basically combined teams. Who and even they were played stacked. for Fulton? Jacko did. That's when PJ yeah, Jack, Jacko, Jacko was on. The, I was about <laughs> to say. <laughs> this, yeah. We, we had a huge. We played, we awesome. played Jacko's Fulton team. Four times that year, which was unheard of. So we played them, we played them two times, I think, in the regular season, and then ended up matching up against them in two different tournaments. And I'll never forget that game. We play, we were playing them in a tournament game, like a play-in game down in uh, down in South Wheeling at Wheeling Middles Field. And yeah, Jacko ripped one into like uh, right or whatever, and fucking PJ <laughs> threw him out at first from the outfield. Dude, that's a <laughs> that's a story that for the ages that never got old. Anytime anybody <laughs> brought it up, it was always hysterical. Uh, and it's so funny, like it's just such a funny Jacko memory to me because I didn't know Jacko back then, and so that had happened, right? And then I went to high school, like that was a summer leading into high school. And, you know, I had my whole freshman year of high school. And then we're in the summer time after that year. And then sophomore year is about to start. And we're at some kind of orientation thing, sophomore year for high school, starting off. And I see Jacko walk in. And I see him. And I turn to whoever. I'm like, hey, that's the kid that PJ threw out <laughs> <laughs> at first from the outfield two summers ago or whatever. And, like, that, you know, like yeah. that's my that, first Jacko memory. Yeah. I- I have a great uh, just sports story. So you guys remember Mick Keys? Yeah. yeah. Great. A- he was a, just a great athlete. Oh, yeah. So me, him, Bradley, and the Schwarf used to play basketball at the Wellness Center like every day after school. Like that's all we did after football season. We would just go play basketball. And um, so the following year, which would have been like, Going into my junior year, going into Mick's senior year, we were like, let's all play summer league basketball. So we're like, okay, yeah. So we all signed up. and Everyone got like, you had to go to the gym. Coach Stevens had to tell you which team you were on. So he's he's naming all the teams. Like Mick got on the good team because he knew he was a good athlete. And he just didn't put me, Bradley, or Schwarf on a team team. at all. (laughs) And he just told us to like go home. What? I I swear to God, you can ask him about it. We were all three of us were so pissed. He was like, "He's this is exactly what he said." He was like, "Yeah, we'll we'll call you if we need you." And then that was the end. (laughs) Wow, (laughs) I know, right? That's fucking brutal. We were so we were so defeated. You you said that was for the summer league teams. Yeah. Wow. But it it was bullshit because they put Mick on a team because they like. Coaches and shit aren't dumb. Like, they know Mick's a really good, he right. was a, just a great athlete, like, all-around athlete. So they're like, oh, maybe he'll actually play. And they didn't put me, Schwarf, or Bradley on a team. That's fucked up. It man. was. We were pissed. I would have been pissed. Too. <laughs> we I, were like, what they the even, fuck? They even let me play summer league basketball, I, and I didn't play during I played the year. one. They let me play one year, too. Like, I was on a team, I think it was my freshman or sophomore year, and then I tried to play my junior year, and they didn't put us on a team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, were, man. were you guys ever part of a brawl? In little league sports, uh, I'm trying to think. Only dude, the only fights I've been in in sports were little Patriots at our own practices. <laughs> <laughs> we just fought with each other, but never. I don't think really against because that's another the thing team. I would just think about all the time. 
It's like yeah. if something like broke out right now, like what would you do? So I mean, okay, I, yeah. technically I was involved in a brawl because I was on the field, but I wasn't actually in it. But junior, no, sophomore year when we played Mate One, do you remember when that when Marcus kept getting that dude to jump off sides on the field goal? Yeah. And then a brawl did begin. Like in the middle, like I remember they were really like fighting in the middle of the field. That's really the only one that I was quote unquote involved in. I wish I was in like a cool ass fight. I, I was suspended once for fighting in hockey and it was like, I mean, everyone has cages on. It's not really fighting. Yeah. Um, I just jump I know over each were. other. I can I, tell by that shitty grin you got. I, I'm trying to think because like I have the reputation for getting into fights. More fights outside of organized sports. Um, shit, I got in a hockey fight this past summer. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And I'm like fucking 30 years old. Uh, I got two good ones, actually. Um, we There used to be a, 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 a separate ice league here for high school kids in wheeling it was uh OVIHL. ovihl oh yeah, yeah. sunday night it nights. was like the wild west back sunday then sunday night some of the best fucking hockey games i ever played in like yeah the, it was re- it was it was at wheeling park so all the games were outdoor and you're right it was like the wild west cuz it was like 7th grade and then like some people played high school like juniors so like yeah. it, it was like a wide range so this was my freshman year and we played the Belmont County team, and it always ended up getting fucking physical against the Belmont County team. And I'm I, just shocked that Belmont County had it could team. field a team, right? They didn't have any. That was that was well, their they, high. They school were the team. one who played juniors in high school. On yes, the they, IHL team. Seniors, really? seniors. Yeah, sometimes because they yeah. didn't have a high school team. So <laughs> any anyone in Belmont County that played hockey was just playing OVIHL. And I would be in like sixth or seventh grade, like yeah. playing in this league. So you got like seventh graders matched up against seniors in high school. So were were the, were they the players that would somehow didn't J M have people play on him sometimes? J M would get the kids from Bishop. Bishop, okay. Well, and did they get Steve Ohio Ville kids? Central. That, really? I, I thought like St. Clairsville they had Merriman, a kid. Merriman played for J M, which was bullshit because he played for us growing up. Like I didn't realize he was from Ohio. Yeah, he went to Steubenville Central. Okay, so yeah, then yeah, but yeah, OVIHL was Sunday night games. And they were always fucking electric, and uh, freshman year and games getting real chippy against uh, Belmont County, <laughs> and something happened. That, the play went dead, whistle was blown, and a kid like two handed me close to our bench. And like I didn't retaliate, but fucking I'm gonna name drop this this guy. Fucking Matt Canners. I don't know if anyone remembers. <laughs> oh, him. I remember Matt, Matt Canners. Canners. Comes fucking flying <laughs> out of nowhere in the picture, right? Just fucking lights this kid up after the play. <laughs> Blindsides him. Oh, Blindsides him. So then like a mini little scuffle breaks out, right? separated game finishes we win now here's the bad part at wheeling park the locker rooms are all down the same tunnel right next to each other right next to each other so we're all leaving the ice and it's just shit talking shit talking and like no one had the common sense to like let one team go first and then the other we're walking back to the locker room side by side as teams oh my god that's probably why they do that now now one team has to wait literally uh, something happened and i i can't remember what we we're shit talking and i just started swinging punches at a guy <laughs> and i shit you not the whole hall erupted in a brawl <laughs> <laughs> gloves that? gloves flying that's, people I getting their helmets torn, torn off it and it in like it was fucking awesome. It's kind of like... I can't like, even lie. It's, like, it's, so many parents got in to, like, break it up. I remember my dad just, like, <laughs> wading through people. Like, it was hilarious, honestly, because we were so young. Yeah. It's kind of like the redneck run for me. I wanted to do it once, yeah. got it out of the way. I, I don't really want to do it now because I'm older, but when I was, when I was younger, I would have liked to just see what it's like getting into a little tussle. I got to tell you, those hockey ones are the best ones to do because you're fully you're in so much equipment that like you're not really yeah. gonna get hurt yeah. and it, it, i feel like it's so much 
like welcome more than other oh, sports. Absolutely. Not that it is, but it's more welcome than any other sport. Yeah, you're not. It's not frown. It's not like you get in a fight in the you get basketball game, game and you're probably like done for the year. Dude, yeah, you get one game suspension. Because yeah. I think about hockey and football, like. I could see the argument being made that maybe one football fight's allowed to happen. You know, they're all yeah. padded up too, except they just have shoes, and in hockey you have skates. Right. And the closest thing I was to a brawl was kind of like more sad for me because I, <laughs> I only started a handful of games my junior year in football, like later on, and <clears throat> so like into the season, Coach Wo was like, "Do you want to just play JV?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'll play." And I got in, a, I got in a brawl in Oak Glen and played JV football as a junior in high school. No way! It was fun though. <laughs> That's Fuck. awesome. That's legit. Fuck. Who gives a shit about playing JV as yeah. a junior? Oh, dude, yeah, no, I didn't like ca- fuck that. Who I didn't cares? care playing as a junior, but they coach Will asked me to play at my senior year, and I was just like, "You're no, fucking yeah, kidding!" Like, <laughs> no, nah. like yeah, senior even, year's pushing it. No, yeah, I not, agree. Not even close. Am I even thinking about playing yeah, JV? I'm with you there. JV football was fun. It was fun. Like, we would drive out to where the fuck, who the fuck knows, Cameron. Yeah. I think my junior year. Dude, was, I, JV dude, football was always fun. I, I the liked games were always fun. They were so laid back. You, know, you were just kind of playing football. I, I playing loved football. JV uh, yeah. hockey games. And actually, um, they got ri- they did it for one year at Central and then got rid of it. My freshman year, we had a full full freshman football team. Well, do you want to know why they got rid of it? We had one too, and I was about to. That's that's the most fun I ever had. Yeah, that w- I was gonna say the freshman football team was a lot of fun. So we we literally our freshman team. Remember, you know how they would do the OVAC thing on the island scrimmages yeah. and stuff like that. So they let we were playing jam, and they just let the freshmen go and at the very end of the fourth quarter. So then the next week or whatever, our freshman team were playing JM, and everyone's like, oh, my God, it's Moundsville, Moundsville football. They were always the best in this league, like, whatever. We literally show up and beat them by 20. Like, it was like 41 to 22. Jake. And then all of a sudden, they reported that we were JV players. Oh, yeah. And, and, we, I remember and we weren't allowed happening. to play, and then our, our team just Yeah, you were considered JV because yeah. they put you in that scrimmage because game. Because we played one snap. I remember wow. this now. Yeah, I remember they hearing, got rid of your team. Your team was done. Yeah, right? And then, then that was it. That was they it. never did the freshman teams ever no, again. We, no. No. We, we, we yeah. got to play JM, and then we played an insane – because Park and Central never played in anything football-wise. Right. So when we played them freshman year – and even JV year too, like basically when when we got kicked out of the freshman league, we just were the JV team essentially. Right, right. So when we played Park, like there were so many people there on both sides. I'll never forget that game either. That one was fun. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, that's why the freshman team got disbanded because JM cried because we marched down there and smacked Fucking that ass. Jake, ass. Jake, do you remember my uh my first JV my freshman year J, first JV game claim uh claim to fame? And shady side. I'm trying to remember. Now. I ha- I housed the kickoff. Oh yeah! And then it got called back. Yeah. For, first of all, why was Dustin playing JV? <laughs> we he play, he, played he JV fucking as a junior. Cr- he cracked someone in the back, and the, my kickoff got called. Got back. Called back. I forgot about. It that. It was the very end of the game. Yeah, that was sick. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. My, mine was it was my sophomore year hockey, the state semifinal. I never scored in, you know, when I got later on in high school, but especially when I played defense, but I shot it from like center ice and it went in against Morgantown and Mason Hoffman was offside. So oh, <laughs> Mason, you did. That's dude, funny, dude. dude. I have like two plays like that too, that stand <laughs> out and they're both sophomore year. Actually one was at shady side. Cause you know how, like when central would play shady side in football, the home team always won. It was always a close, at least when I was there, it was always a close game, but the home team always won. Yeah. So it's, Fourth quarter, there's like two minutes left, and Davon gets the kick return. And I, dude, I don't know how I did this to this day, but I literally like and ran up and just crushed two dudes somehow. Like I was able to block two dudes. Davon takes it to the fucking house. We're going nuts. And then they called uh, somebody for a hold. Oh, dude, that's the worst. It man. is the worst. And then my other one is, on, is an unfortunate turn of, turn of events for myself. So same season, I'm on kick return. You know, you run out there, you count who your person is, and that's who you block. So we're playing Steubenville Big Dude, I knew Red. you were going to tell this. We're playing Steubenville oh, Big Red. It's so the great. fucking open. It, I, I can't remember. I think it was the opening kick return. Yeah, it was. 
And I run out there, and I'm, like, thinking my number. I'm, like, seven or whatever it is. So I go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I land on Bronco Busey. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I literally land right on Bronco Busey, and I remember shitting my fucking pants. So the kickoff happens. You know, I just start taking off running at him. I'm like, I got to – he's going to crush me if I don't run. So I just take off running at him. Two seconds go by. The next thing I know, I'm just staring at <laughs> yeah. the sky, dude. He laid me the fuck out. Bro. Dude, he was a scary fucking dude. Yeah, dude, like man. when I look back, like how are the how was that a, like a high school player? <laughs> like, fr- yeah, I remember the cover of that book or whatever was Dan and Bronco Busick, and I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? Like looking back, I'm like, these were grown ass men. Like in playing high school, it's football. wild, dude. He's fighting in Bellator right now, or he's trying to. Like Those, he, that Steubenville team was. Um, who was their quarterback? Dwight Macon, I believe. Yeah, Dwight Macon. He was a stud. Nice. That that whole team was really good, and and it was really cool for the Valley that like Central got to play him that year. It just really should have been the year before, if though. Only it was the year before. I'll say yeah, it till yeah, yeah. till I die. We would have beat him. I with, don't know wait, about wait, beat wait. him, but was that like, with, it would have been. Was that with uh, Alex? Yeah. Oh, it was no, I think I, would, I think easily would have beat him. I do. I really do. They were unreal good. Because they, they were, were there. they the, were. It was some of the most fun. F- the, yeah. Those two years that I got to watch Palchetti's team play was some of the best yeah. football I've ever watched. Dude, I I, I j- never missed a game because of how fun it was to fucking watch. Dude, they were. It. I remember just being like, because like during the varsity games, I was always like, dude, I don't want to play as a freshman, dude, whatever. And then we'd run in. It'd be 52 to nothing at halftime. And we're. I'm like, God damn it, dude. Now I got to fucking play now. You, you, you really know that. So what? they? I think they won states like three years in a row up to that year, right? Oh, yeah. They maybe went, even they, four years in a row. Yeah, it was it was either three or four. Like I all believe. of Chetty, Pal, Alex Palchetti's, did he win all four years? I'm of pretty football? sure he did. I mean, I, I think. I, yeah, I think it was 2005 to 2008. Because I well, think they're the only ones, right? They're I, definitely the only ones. Yeah, I think you're right. Row. Truthfully, well, that's a very impressive. But my freshman year, they changed the offense to the spin series or whatever. And it was just fucking electric. Electric. And so they dominated that fucking year. And you knew, you knew that team was the real deal because the next year they couldn't get any West Virginia teams to schedule them. So th- our whole schedule that year was like inner city Pittsburgh schools, that team from Washington, D.C. Dude, we played Akron, Bucknell, Warren, JFK. Like what? It was crazy. And they still like fucking wiped everybody oh, they were that team was recognized on espn they were like uh, oh ranked yeah. in the top 100 high school teams that year they were fucking scary good they were scary good Folk. so yeah i do i truly believe they could have they it, i think it probably would have been a really close game against steubenville but i think they could have won dude i remember going into sophomore year that that shady side game i was talking about we had the second longest uh winning like for football in the country. Yeah. Like it was, it was the, the team above us was that team that they made a movie about like a Disney movie. Oh about yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. That's the, it was them. And then us, I mean, I, theirs was by a lot more, obviously. I but. think if, I think if we were in today's landscape, I think that that central team would have got a lot more like media attention for sure. You know what I mean? Like for with sure. social media and stuff. Cause they, they would have be been posting. Oh yeah. Dude, this is way out of what we're talking about, I just thought of something. Have you guys ever heard of the Savannah Bananas? Yes. It's a like a minor league baseball team, but they like dance and shit at, <laughs> like at the plate and where like St. Patrick's Day, like some of the players wore kilts for the game and shit. Yeah, like it's a real like it's a real league but they're just like the harlem globe globe trotters of the league or whatever and they're like the wild things and people go because you said see places. on the media i've been seeing them all over tiktok and they're sick i'm I, like i almost bought a hat i want to buy a savannah bananas hat too it's just I've a sweet i've never name. heard of it i have not seen that no uh-uh. well i'm pumped to play beer league hockey though i'm excited dude next season yeah well, recruited a bunch of Wheeling boys. Yeah, you guys should come up and watch I'm some games. Well, yeah, if, I mean, if the games aren't fucking. Well, it's it's uh, it's good that it's this it's the start of like the spring slash summer session. So high school hockey's over with. So we won't have to schedule around them anymore. So nice. we'll have some good 
timed games. Nice. Yeah, we still can't believe you guys had a game like Friday at like 11, 10 p.m. We have a game tomorrow night at 11. What? Yeah, I'm not going oh, to it, okay. obviously. I was going to say, hold It's on. first round of playoffs, too. I'm, I'm like kind of upset I have to miss it. So hopefully we win so I can play the next game. But Damn. Whoa. I'm excited, though. We have so many wheeling guys for the team next season. Is Mason playing? Yeah. So we got... I hope he gets crushed. Me, <laughs> me, Brady, Merkel are all returning from wheeling. PJ has played on this team before, but now he's returning. And then newcomers, we got Bubba, Schwartz, Parker Henry, Dude, and, the, and Mason. Your team is stacked. Are you guys about to be the Thunderbirds? Yeah. Work our. We should be the fucking Thunderbirds. But we got some Pittsburgh guys on the team. They're all really good dudes. They're we have a good t- a, a, like a good good camaraderie. I'm I'm you're you're gonna like the guys. What's on the team? team? They're, they're cool dudes. What's but the team name? Hard Pass. Oh, that's a cool. That name. is a cool name. I like actually. that. It's like a play on words. Yeah, I like that. I thought you'd be a dick for a second. Yeah, I thought. No, no, okay, don't team. tell me. No. <laughs> well, <I don't laughs> that's, that's the team name. And that's the I'll, team name. Then I was like, oh yeah, oh, hard okay. pass. I get yeah. it. So I'm I'm actually like really fucking excited for next session. Hell yeah, dude. Especially because uh, Parker's a, a fucking stud. So is PJ. They're they're gonna elevate the team, dude. I I Parker was PJ was really good at hockey but i always remember going to watch parker play yeah too. maybe i need to come live stream the game you should like detroit you should. You sweet. that's what fucking uh merkel's girlfriend like comes up and films the games for his for all their content and shit that's fire <laughs> fucking you i just know because when we went and did the barstool hockey fest like honestly without pj and parker they carried us yeah, it would have been rough <laughs> <laughs> it would have been rough like pj and parker was like you know, they put on a show. Hashtag pack the live stream. Dude, it, it was funny when JT was doing that because I could just tell the second day when you guys were rolling in, you guys were all so hungover, dude. <laughs> second day. Or first, no, first, first day. Yeah. Both, yeah. Well, both for me, but first morning I was like vomiting. It, okay, I'm sorry. It was the first day because, yeah, you guys were there a night before. It, I, I threw up one of the mornings. Dude, I woke up on the fucking toilet. <laughs> I woke up hanging off the toilet. For the first morning, and I got people texting me like, "Our game starts in ten minutes." I was like, "Fuck, Damn. like the, fuck." And then I am I'm, try- I'm trying to be a commentator, like talking about the game, and then I have freaking cracked out Jesus next to me. <laughs> oh my god! I forgot trying about to that. offer us water and shit. I forgot about. And then that. he picked up a cig off the ground and <laughs> smoked it. That was the second day. That was my honestly one. I am gonna say it right now. The Barstool team fucking cheated against us with their score. I'm I'm calling them out, I'm and trying, I would love let's get a neutral it. site rematch. Wheeling Mood Dogs versus the Barstool team, best of three. I'm, ca- I'm calling them out right now. But anyways, that was a fun game just to play against all them and like the the hype and attention. Like there was a big crowd for that game. But that game that though I think it was the only game we played on the other rink where the guy was trying to give us water, so yeah. cracked out Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was like the best game. We played so well that game. Dude, I think I scored that that team that showed up, right? That team showed up and they had a better record than us. Yeah, they were and, supposed to be like really good. And their good. friends, their friends were standing off to our left fucking shit talking us and all of us were just being silent and we came out and just fucking smacked them. We beat them yeah. by like 8. Yeah. Dude, we fucking crushed them. Dude, I, there definitely was a game I remember you scored two goals cuz I literally had it on my TV. <laughs> like, I, I put it on my iPad and then, like, put it on my TV, and my mom and dad came over, and we were just watching you guys play. Dude, it was like, I was it was so cool how you live-streamed the games. You had, a bu- like, a bunch of people yeah. watch us play. Yeah, that was fun. That was a fun time. I wish it wasn't in Detroit. Yeah, but I just want to know, like, what de- which, I guess because the sports book's there, but, like, which decision maker said, hey, one, let's put a casino in Detroit, and two, let's have a hockey th- well, league here. I think... I don't know if this is true or not, but like the first night when they all showed up, like the actual spit and check, like these guys, they were filming their golf thing somewhere. Yeah, they were. And like close. So I don't know if that had like something major to do with it, but it would make sense. Maybe like scheduling. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure it was lined up with the uh, sports book, too. I think it was a combination of all that stuff. It had to be, which I didn't even realize like that that casino was Barstool sponsored like that. Excuse me. I I had no clue until we got up in, into the special area and it was 
there was barstool stuff everywhere. It was pretty cool. It was cool, dude. That's why I was kind of hoping that the barstool was going to sponsor the Coliseum because then, then it would be like you'd s- see casinos be more inclined to just become like barstool sports books. Like, dude, yeah. like how mm-hmm. cool would it be if the casino one was just like a barstool sports book? Yeah. But dude, I I can't believe. Uh, yeah, we had a guest stand us up. Biz was supposed to come on the podcast because he's getting inducted tomorrow, and he just didn't show up. So we see in the wheeling site. Fucking no showed us. Yeah, yeah, he said something about he was going to Godfather's yeah, instead. That's what I heard too. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever, dude. It's okay. But, but yeah, no, that uh, and I appreciate you guys coming up to the cabin. The cabin was fun. It, it was, was fun. It was a good was time. Sick. Yeah, I, I uh, I just wasn't expecting that nice of a cabin, and not that there's. Not nice cabins, but the no, one I agree. You know, like when mm-hmm. I got the key and I opened it up and I opened the door on Thursday, my first thought was, one, am I supposed to be in this nice ass cabin? And two, this cabin's nice as fuck. So All those Spido ones are pretty nice. They're fire. But you you guys had a Spido one uh that Halloween yeah. weekend too, right? Yeah. And it was nice. It, it was just was old. Yeah, it old was old th- it wasn't new. Maybe it is now. Like maybe since we've been there. Yeah. But yeah, like the one you got, the floors were you could tell like the floors were new. Yeah, they they definitely renovated. Yeah, a lot of those. Well, that that's what I was talking. recently too. Oh, for sure, definitely I, in the last like couple years. I was telling my mom and dad, I was like, from from now on, when I want to do something random and I feel like spending money or people want to throw money, that's the move, dude. Because oh, like, absolutely. yeah, I agree. You know, like you you don't feel like you're in Wheeling, even though you are. Like the views are immaculate, and it's just. And I remember driving home on Sunday after I packed everything up and my dad followed me and helped me unload the truck. And I just looked at him. I was like, dang, that beats a 10 and a half hour drive home from the beach. Yeah. Like it was just so nice packing everything up, driving down and just being home. Already. And you don't have mm-hmm. to go anywhere. You know, no. everything's right there. It's, yeah. it's you can so pack nice. a whole like three days and just there. Yeah. Like I, I brought a whole, I brought a whole ass suitcase, dude. I literally <laughs> just brought a suitcase, put everything in it. And I was like, I'm just going to. Fucking live up here, basically. Yeah, hell yeah. So, yeah, that was fun. And, yeah, I, I think the Nailers game should be a good-ass time tomorrow. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. The, the, the one and only other time that I've had one of these special suites was a pretty good time. So, it should be it should be fun. Yeah, I mean, it will be sectioned off like that. And what's cool, too, is our – so, obviously, the game will be going on, but our suite has TVs in it as well. Damn. So I'll, oh, have the nice. pens. I'll put the Pens game on that. Oh, or, wow. I probably yeah. won't even watch the Nailers game for like a minute. What a, what like a game a changer that is. It's a big, <laughs> they got a big game. It's a, bi- it's a game. T- like So everyone will just be chilling. We'll that have the food catered in there. Can we'll we have... steal a TV for the Sweet 16? Yeah. I'm be gambling my I face think, I, I can't remember if there's one or two TVs. Because it makes an L shape, right? I think there's around like one the on each side. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. there might be one and one. We'll, we'll, Man, we'll see what, we'll like see what we can move. make happen. It'll be a vibe. Yeah. But, but there'll be a lot of shit going on. It's obviously, like the uh, the Bissonette stuff and everything. I, It'll I, be fun. I feel like, too. I, bet, I think uh, he's going to stop by our suite. Well, yeah, why wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah I mean, where he, the suite, he knows we're going to be there. That's what, I, that's what I mean. It's like, wait, why wouldn't someone that knows the Juice Box podcast boys are going to have a, like, a little box suite thing in a Nailers game, yeah, they're going to come. Yeah, that, that's like, like, what it, like what? That's yeah. like me going to Los Angeles yeah. and not linking up with Jack Nicholson for a night. Yeah. Like, it's going to happen. Right. You yeah. Know? Right. You know, I, I'm definitely wearing my... Uh, I'm definitely wearing my Barstool Sports you fire Hockey you Fest did. jersey now. I for sure am. <laughs> it's not even a question. I'm wearing it. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me, too. Yeah, I'm, 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 ex- I'm excited for tomorrow. It'll be the first time I hit a like a river city for a little bit, and then West Bank. I really have not done that since the Riders, Rough Riders. The riders. Game, which I didn't get to go to one Rough Riders game. Really? Yeah. Because I, I lived in Morgantown, I think. And okay. Here's my take on them. The, the, start, the first two Rough Riders games I thought, like, were extremely annoying. Not the game-wise, they had like an in-game commentator who I think I, I can't remember who it was. It's somebody from Wheeling. I, so I'm not, I'm not meaning to trash you if you listen to our show, but it was just like a little much. And the arena was like super hot, I remember. And I just didn't have like a great time. But then the rest of the games were a lot better. 
Dude, I remember they were the, a lot better. Remember the championship game hits? Everybody's hype as fuck. It's one of those days where it's like 80 or 90 degrees outside. So everyone's like, yeah, we're going to be inside. And the fucking air conditioning. <laughs> That's okay. That's Yikes. what I'm remembering. It was, it was like, so fucking hot. It was like hot. 110. And I was in the top section. So heat rises. I just remember sitting up there. I, I really think we left at halftime. We I was did. Like, we have we to did. Leave. We all left. I can I'm remember. about to pass the fuck out. Plain as day. We were all like, got to get the fuck out of here. It's way too hot. <laughs> it's way too hot. But honestly, I prefer Naylor, which I used to kind of be like a Nailers game hater at one point in my life because it just went to so many, like went to so many as a kid. And like, you know, I was in my like mid 20s. People were like, let's go to the Nailers game. And I'm like, why? I've been to... What am I going to see that I haven't seen? But now I'm coming back around. I'm I, well, like, I think they they stunk for a long time. It's a better, too. but I, yeah. I was the same way. Like I, why would you? I've gone to more Naylor games this year since I was like five years old. Yeah, and so, they've been a good time. So. I, I was the exact same way with all that stuff. I'm like, I don't even feel like sitting here and watching mm-hmm. this. And then I remember once I realized Jens was in the basement and they had that bar down there. I was like, I'll go to any of these. Oh, I, I yeah. go there every game. I have I to mean, say, like they've done a good job of. I guess what do you call them? Like their like their amenities. Is that the right word? Yeah. Like yeah. the stuff that's in the arena now. Like changing the bottom thing to a gens was a good move. Because they, they got put TVs a, and shit yeah, down there. It's it was a good move. They put the Tito's sloppy dogs as one of the stands in there which where you can get fire. food, which is so fire. Like they've done stuff like that. These I know these corner suites have been around for like five years, but like even that type of stuff, like see, I'm excited. I've never been in one of those. They're pretty cool. Yeah, I, I was there for either. the uh, Symphony on Ice. It was beautiful. Mm. But yeah, so we had a, that's what I was doing before. It's not. It's it's sweet. It's a nice little mm. thing to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 hoping they do bring concerts back there because yeah. there's no reason why they shouldn't have concerts there. We sh- we like I said, we just need to start our own. Uh, promotion yeah dude i've i've been i've been thinking thing. about this it's like what what could we do to bring like comedy acts to wheeling yeah dude the the wh- what's it why am i blanking improv no the uh capital the capital the th- capital theater should get so much more use out of it than it does there's there's no reason a theater lee, tour Bri- comedian, lee bryce is playing there lee bryce is I- I think that's what I saw. Like, uh, I think it's when we're gone for the beach. Fuck. But that's, I mean, he's a pretty famous. That's why I just think it's pretty cool. He's yeah. a pretty famous. Because I know, like, Jerry Seinfeld's guy. been there. Yeah, and there, like, there's been some bigger names that have been there Ralphie over the years. May, R.I.P. Like, it just needs to get more consistent use. Like, it's like a historical building. It's been there for fucking ever. Like, fucking use it. I mean, there. How, how many shows have you, do you think you've personally seen in there? I've seen one. And I was in. Can you remember what it was? Kenny Chesney. And so I, I've seen third grade, maybe. I've seen a couple. Oh, we or where did we see Aaron Carter? Was that at the Civic that was Center? At the Civic Center. <laughs> I saw. <laughs> I can remember fine. going yeah. there on a field trip in school to see like a play. Okay. So like, if that counts, that was like sixth grade. And then, uh, in high school, me, Tyler, and PJ, we went and saw Mike Jones. No way. Oh, Mike, Mike Jones performed there. What? It was that's the cool. it was the trashest concert I've ever been oh, to. Man. He probably went to uh, Karen's Pub good. afterwards. Yeah, Matt, Mike Jones, didn't he perform in Karen's Pub? I'm, I'm Somewhere sure. close. I'm pre- no, I'm pretty sure Mike Jones loves Karen's Pub. But there's a TikTok guy I followed him because he makes me laugh. He plays like every song until he says Mike Jones and then he shuts it off. <laughs> Dude. It it was it was it took forever, right? That he had about like six or seven openers who were all local rappers. <laughs> and then the guy that was right before him was that Slick Watts guy. Remember remember hearing about he was from Ferry? I've 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 heard I know the name. Yeah. So then it's like, okay, Mike Jones is about to come out finally. Mike Jones comes out. He didn't finish one fucking song. What? He rapped like half of like he would start a song, get like halfway through it, and they'd stop. Then move on to the next one. I was like, "What is this shit? Like, why That's did we sad. pay for these tickets?" I like Mike Jones. So do I. I think you fucking, forgot the words. I fucking like Mike Jones a lot. I don't know. I would forget. Well, Who I mean, fucking know? over his name? I, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think th- I think there was something to do with like it was like a time thing. Like 
the the openers took way too long, and they told Mike Jones like, "Yeah, you only got like a half hour." <laughs> well, I mean, that's seriously. I guess, I, it's I guess, like one thirty. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what happens when you have six openers. Yeah, yeah, it was hilarious though. Like I was still so young. I'm pretty sure, like Tyler's grandpa dropped us off there and picked us up. That like, is that's so how funny. that's how young we were oh, going to a fucking God. Mike Jones concert. <laughs> Yeah, dude. I mean, but uh, again, there's no reason like a Santino or a Schultz yeah, or dude, any of those guys, especially comedy acts. Yeah, like, like the 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 theater tour guys. You dude, could have like, all of them. And in that place, seats a lot. I feel like. Well, dude, I I for, bet it, for a comedy show, it would be perfect size. Oh yeah, for sure. Great like size. the theater tours, I think they're only like one or two thousand seats. Like yeah, and they fucking like I know Chris DeSefano is doing a theater tour right now. And I, I always think that. I'm like, dang, what what would you have to do? Or how do you get in that business to where you could just have, you know, you have the stop and just have one stop be wheeling? Be cool. It you got to just start making cold calls. For real. Though. Calling managers and shit. What I really, and, and I think that's why, like, artists aren't here on a consistent basis. Because normally, like, if an artist or a comedy guy is going on tour, like, they're going to stop in Pittsburgh. And it's like, why would you stop somewhere that's 45 minutes away as a next stop? Like, you're going to pick one or the other, which really sucks. Well, it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because normally on, on a lot of tours, you'll see, you'll see, like, you'll look at their dates. It'll, it'll be Columbus yeah. and then Pittsburgh the next night or vice versa, depending on which way they're traveling. And then they keep going, like, to, yeah. like, yeah. Philadelphia. Yeah, and, and it's like... They're I don't think gonna, yeah, they're I not going to stop midway yeah. between but, those but two But also, places. though, it's like money's money. Like if like if you could, you know what I mean? If if you could, which that would be hard, if you could figure out a way to sell that out, it's like why wouldn't you? I agree. I 100% agree, and that's why I think like what what it's going to come down to is like yeah, three thousand seats. That is perfect. That's I, literally yeah, that's perfect. I think what it's going to come down to is having like an aggressive promoter in Wheeling. We don't have that. Dude, maybe like like and from what I've heard or from what I was told, like the city controls all acts at the Capitol. It, dude, the city's so, trash. With and all this and stuff. like they they don't push it hard enough. You that's, know what I mean? That's why we need that's why we need Z to win. So there. I don't think it. I, and honestly, <laughs> who knows if they'd ever give up like the promotional rights or what whatever it is whatever you would call it like let an outside promoter like try to schedule shows at that venue like, i would just love to be the guy like i'll quit my job i'll wear the same suit every day get a briefcase and just like walk around and just promote the shit out of the capital that'll be my job be like hey you heard of the the <laughs> capital music hall in wheeling that's what i'm here for my, my office will be in that new mug shots place i'll drink coffees all day and i'll just have my fucking briefcase and call everyone. dude it'd be such a fun job. It'd be so fun. It'd be such a fun job just trying to bring axe to wheeling. Well, dude, when I, I mean, you said you've listened to Santino's podcast. I listen to those guys periodically. They always all shout out all of these club owners and runners. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, Jim from the Denver Comedy Works, great guy. They just talk about him normally. Imagine them just being like, yeah, Jake from the Capitol Music Hall is great. You need to go. Like, I'd be so pumped. Dude, the, the move would be. And and like this is something that I, I love this place. I always go to Pittsburgh and I see shows at Mr. Smalls. Oh, uh, I went to Mr. Smalls once to see Take Two perform. <laughs> it was you. lit. But, yeah. but dude, Mr. Smalls. I mean, how, what a cool venue! It is right? cool. Yeah, dude, it's, they bought an old church and like repurposed it, and it's sick. It the, is the cool. place is so cool. It is cool. Like that would be the move. Like if we wanted to bring acts to Wheeling. It's like almost like you just need to get your own place and bring them. True. Fuck the Capitol. Fuck West Banco. Get your own spot. All we gotta do is them. buy St. Michael's Church and just rent it out. And I <laughs> guess, and I guess, Generations <laughs> kind of does it, but like for a big, big act, they only have their outdoor thing. Outdoor stage. And you can't do outdoor all year round. Yeah. Obviously, dude. I remember. I'm trying to think. I know the Clarks are big locally, but I feel like they've the, had some big country people. And I saw Parmalee out outside i remember that was fucking dope too mm -hmm. but yeah no you are right it would be that thing where you have to get that piece of land and building and just do it do it on your own i think like if something like that ever came up in wheeling it'd be really cool like an, sure. like repurposing an old historical building into a venue like like that dang maybe There's we should gotta just be hunt. one yeah let's go hunt let's go hunt for some buildings you gotta you gotta like what where are their old um are there any old churches in Wheeling that are shut down? 
I don't know. We should go. I find swear him. there was one in uh, like North Center. We, yeah, like over by the fit fucking center market. Center market, like one of those streets back in there. It's pro- someone probably bought it, but there was a church for sale sale because I remember looking at it. Yeah, no that that would be a cool thing to do. Just renovate renovate it, and then you could just rent it out for anything. It'd be awesome. It'd be yeah, sick. you'd be a church. Brew, uh, there's that brewery church in, in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, dude. There's a lot of repurposed old churches in Pittsburgh, which I think is really cool, dude. Maybe, maybe we just buy one of those old Victorian houses on the island and just redo the whole inside and just call it the Island Tap House. Isn't this, uh, <laughs> dude, isn't this downtown by Central? <laughs> oh, yeah, dang, there it is. That's for sale. There it is, boys. Wait, isn't that the Scottish Rite that's building? Literally, no, that's it's right up the block. If that's where 150 you, G's, my that's my house, it? damn wow, my house is right down the street, hangar right, and that's you're at my house. We found it then. Here it is. Might I didn't realize this building Here's was for calling. sale. Dang, you guys want to start an LLC? Yeah. Hold on, let me see. Let me see all those highlights. So yeah, new roof in 2017, new truss work and box gutters 2016. Truss, big truss. We can it get qualifies a, for historic tax. Yeah, credit. we can get a grant. Dang. Stabilizing masonry done. Man, we might have to give Joe a call, dude. <laughs> I'd have to get Joe, dude. Dang, if I had my phone here, I'd just call him right now and just put it on speaker and be like, "Hey, this is being recorded right now." Hey, Joe, it'd should, be so nerve wracking. Should we? He's so <laughs> nerve wracking now because <laughs> <laughs> we could get sued like a motherfucker. <laughs> dude, what? definitely. Wait, I'm just saying, like something to like look into because like we all talk about wanting to do different <laughs> shit and like stuff that would be enjoyable in life. And, like, you hear all these stories about people that do it, and they just take the risk. They just take the well, risk. Well, no, I mean, that's literally what it is. It's right. literally saying, I'm going to do this. If I fail, I have nothing. If it works, I have everything. Like, it's literally, yeah. it's not like an easy thing. But it, no. if you think about it, too, everything that we've talked about that we've wanted to do, like a bar, comedy, even a small, you, if we got the right building, you could do all of that. Oh yeah. You you could you could easily do all of that to where like right in the front's the bar, the other side is like a food deli Bro, place. Elm Grove Marathon. <laughs> Elm Grove Marathon. Bro, I'm not kidding. Next time you drive past it, right by Arby's, look at it and like like envision. And it. you're talking about the area in the, behind it. Yeah, right? well, like the whole it's got the little shitty gas station part where you walk in and get a Snickers bar, but then it's got that Full garage thing that has there's nothing in it, and you got it's like big parking lot and everything. I'm like, dude, if you bought this building and just completely renovated it, it could be fucking. Is, sick. is that motel still open? Does anyone know yeah. how how do they stay open? Dude, I, it's gotta be question. like a like a I don't know. It, it, but it is in is it fact a, still it, open. Is it a brothel? I think it's uh, cash only by the hour. It's gotta be it's, something. I don't like want that. it to be defam- defamatory. Is that the right word? Yeah, defamatory. I don't know. Because that's all. Is it defamatory or deflammatory? De- it is deflammatory. <laughs> <definitely. It's flam- laughs> I like defamatory. <laughs> hey, yo, defam. Uh, but I'm trying to think of the building because one of those buildings back behind there is actually owned by Main Street Bank. Which one? And what, they what, store a bunch of stuff in it. What? What like I'm talking the, about? Yeah, I don't I do, know if I'm you're talking about the talking same about building. The gas station. Okay, then it's not. Right next so to the one right to the right. No, okay. There's a garage. Yeah, okay. I think that is the marathons, though, too. Because I see them going in there all the time. I think they store stuff in there. No, we can't Any- be talking about the same. Okay, one, anyway, but literally <laughs> next to Arby's, just the marathon. That's there. That's what I'm talking about. I'm. Sh- I mean, just just put an offer on. Just drive. Next just- time you drive by it, I want you to look at it and like picture it. It's like right off the exit. Easy traffic there all day long, bro. I'm telling you. Yeah, I mean, you you pop that garage open, throw a couple TVs up, get a bar area Dude, right there. Dude, that's and you're what set. I'm saying. Yeah. You gotta renovate literally everything because it's a shithole in there. Sorry, people, if you <laughs> are listening that work at the Elm Grove Marathon, but yeah. So here's here's all I'm saying. I think the area is gonna grow substantially. In the next like five years, I agree. 100%. I think a lot of stuff's gonna come here, whether we choose to stick around for it or not, you know, whatever. But you read all the history about Wheeling, 
it was a big hub for certain things all through history. Like people came here for shit. If if the area is gonna grow again, people are gonna want shit to do. Facts. You could maybe make this into like a little fucking hub again. Yeah, I'm with you. I dude, I'm literally me and Sith were just talking about this because He's reading some book about like people taking chances and money and stuff like that. And that's it's that's literally all it boils down to. Like in in my head, I'm so every I mean, we're all programmed this way. You're trapped against the wall. You think once you get a job, you are comfortable because you're able to pay your bills. And that's the one thing that anytime you think of making any kind of jump, it's like, well, how am I going to pay my bills? It's literally just a matter of somehow changing your mindset and being like, I'm going to take a chance. That's all it is. I'm just too much of a pussy to do it because, like, dude, just, just imagine doing it and putting all this time and effort in it and failing. But then again, it's like, if you put all the effort and time in, you're not going to fail. You know what I mean? I mean, you can fail. I though. mean, you can, but if you keep working, you're eventually not going to fail at it, though. Yeah, I agree. Like, if... if, I if, agree. if, if For, like, here, see? I'm sorry, I'm, bu- I'm pulling up the Elm Grove Okay, so, picture. yeah, that's not... Yeah, not, not the building I was thinking of. No, yeah, so yeah. literally all they use is that little part. Right. And nothing is in there, because I go in there. Like, just imagine completely renovating that whole thing, and this is all parking. Dude, I'm telling you. You suck. Genius. It'd be so weird to have a bar... Connected to a gas station, but you know, but you, you know, know I, mean? I would just name the bar Elm Grove Marathon. Like I would just, <laughs> I would just sick. buy the whole just thing, name it the gas, station. the whole business. <laughs> like we can take the gas pumps out, and that's all the parking lot, and then it's just the building, and it we, the Elm Grove Marathon, dude. Bar. Or or you could call it, or you could call it the gas house, <laughs> or just the gas station, or the gas station. Yeah, I like that, the gas station. Yeah, you guys trying to go to the gas station? Yeah. <laughs> Hitting the gas station with the boys to watch the pens yeah. play. Or the station. That's pretty cool. The station. The station. Sorry, I, d- I interrupted your whole spiel. It's all good, dude. I'm uh, Speaking of I'm just, gas, I'm just running passionate. out of I'm gas. just passionate of the, about the Elm Grove Whoa. Marathon. Dude, I swear, last time I looked up, we were at like 28 minutes. Yeah. Honestly, dude, I'm oh. going to talk shit on us for a second before we're like, dude, this episode might be 20 <laughs> minutes long. It <laughs> might be end up being four minutes. And then literally I look up and it's like 38 minutes. I'm like, what the fuck? Uh, I I will say it. I don't know how we do it sometimes. Like, yeah, we have that episode where we're in the trenches. But, like, sometimes, I have to say, in the history of the podcast, there's been plenty of episodes where we could have been in the trenches. But some somehow, we always just find a way. We have like, had- like, I don't know how we just, like, conversation just fucking emerges out of nothing. All of a just sudden. hashtag it. Find had, a way. We had no idea. And this is true. Like, we were panicking before this episode because we were all like, there's nothing to talk about. And then all of a sudden, we just jump into Little League yeah. Baseball and I out can't, of the clouds. Like, and I can't even remember now what triggered it, but it was just like, boom, we, there we were. And we had it. <laughs> we, we just <laughs> took off fucking running. I stole second and rounded home. Yeah. You know? Literally. Literally. Yeah. And here we are. We're over an hour, which we didn't think we were going to get to. So, so, so I mean, solid up. A couple things. Um, I don't know how it happened, but Mile High Field is just on fire right now in Denver. Like the football stadium is oh, just I, I actually on fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I it, thought this was just a figure of speech. no. no it's like, actually on fire. It's literally on fire. Like wow. I don't know how it happened. I, I I I'm speculating it's probably Raiders fans that were pissed that Cowherd had him finishing last in the division. Pure speculation, but. I just want to, yeah, I'm praying for the football stadium because now it's like, where the hell are we going to play? Hashtag build back Is better. It, it's on fire that bad. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like, it's like as bad as the Amazon forest fires. Like, <laughs> it is, dude. It's Australia all over again. Fuck. And then another thing, the Joker, the Joker uh, deleted scene was pretty wild, too. It was, that was, it was good. Very, oh, was good. very, very dark scene. Um, Very, very excited to see that Joker. I think he's going to be a bad, badass motherfucker. Yeah, I agree. A nice young take on the Joker. Yeah, but other than that, you guys got anything, or has it been a time? It's been a time. If you guys want to watch a new movie, watch uh, The Adam Project with Ryan Reynolds on Netflix. Uh, one thing I hate this week, uh, <laughs> trivia. I hate trivia because I love it, and I love history and facts and stuff, and I stink at it. Every time I go, I feel like I'm a moron, so I hate trivia. <laughs> Where'd you do trivia at? So we... A couple of people been getting like one or two beers one day a week, um, and then we wanted to eat too. So we went to Generations, and it just so happened that on Tuesday, oh, it's Tuesday. Shit, it's trivia. Fuck, so dude, I'd be su- if 
I'd be super down to start playing trivia every, every, uh, every week. I will go. But I'll be honest, <laughs> I, I haven't. I, I love haven't, it. I hate it. I haven't hit a trivia in a while. I love trivia. I, and I used to go to the Gens one a lot before COVID. Dude, the Sheets trivia in Morgantown was just unmatched. Sheets so trivia? Oh, yeah. The Sheets <laughs> on University where they had the tables and everything. So they had them on Tuesday nights, I think. And we would go buy tall, each buy a tall boy. Get sheets, food, sit at a table, and play trivia. That's lit. It <laughs> was. So sick. But, That's so sick. And then there was a you know a team who had to ruin it for everybody. I, they would go around to all the sheets trivias and like <laughs> just beat everybody. That's annoying. It was so annoying. Like just yeah. it, dude. It, it there's I think there's a couple teams that always go to the Gens one, and there's been a couple times where I'm, where at the halfway <laughs> point. I've been in my team's been in like first or second. I'm like, let's fucking go, let's fucking go, and then second half just get the, the second demolished. Half, it gets real. It, it gets so real during the second half. I, like, dude, I remember oh. I went like one or two times though, and I got pissed because like you would look around and you you could tell people were on their phones. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to yeah, it's hard weird. to fucking regulate. I wait. I did it with you. Yeah, I can't remember what what that was the last time I went. I remember now. That was the last one I went to too. Is me, you, and Brady was still with uh, what's her face? Kendra. He, he was. Yeah. Okay. Remember that? Yeah. No. I mean, I, and I know. She I'm was saying. googling answers, and I was getting pissed. Oh yeah. I was getting pissed. I was like, "Fucking stop cheating! We're gonna get, do this the right way." Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. That had to be so long it, ago. It was, I mean, it it had to be Springdale days, like 2017, 2018. like a long Fuck, time. ago. I probably went after that, but that's like the last time I remember. That's the last time I was there. Who the fuck else was there with us? I mean, yeah, we had to have a a, a mini squad. I know us four was there. I think I think maybe like DJ Ham was with us. Could have been. I don't know. I don't know. So don't yeah, know. trivia. I'm da- I'm trivia. down to play. It's a bitch. I'm down to Wouldn't fucking like play. It. Trivia. It's a nice. bitch. All right, it's been a time. Follow me Twitter, Instagram, Juice Fisherman. Follow the YouTube, the Juice Box Podcast, and I watched Spider Man for the first time since I bought it. Still incredible. Big shout out to Peter 1, Peter 2, and Peter 3. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can catch me at John Theodore Nixon on Instagram. That's John Theodore Nixon on Instagram. I'm on the Juice Box Podcast Twitter. That's at the Juice Box Pod. That's at the Juice Box Pod. Follow us on Facebook, the Juice Box Podcast. We are not the Diabetes, the Juice Box Podcast. Follow me on Twitter at Bubba Slaughter. Follow me on Instagram at the underscore Harry Slaughter. Follow me on TikTok at the Harry Slaughter, but it's spelled like the actual words instead of my name. There you go. Uh, let's see. I am at Pokizar on all socials. Just search it. It's probably me. That's Z Z-A-R. Z A R. Z is zebra. <laughs> a is an apple. R is in respects. R as in Reebok. Don't get it twisted. Bye bye.